What's up everyone? This is Austin Bram from Integral AI and welcome back to our channel, your favorite place to learn all things about AI and Agentic AI. Today I have some very exciting news that just happened hours ago. Google just dropped their Gemini 2.5 Pro model and it is taking the space by storm. But I mean, of course, I know we all understand that literally every single time a new model comes out, this is basically what we're saying because it's true, but it only lasts for a very short amount of time, obviously. But that's besides the point. Let's talk about why Gemini 2.5 Pro is the best model out there right now. So first, let's start with historically, why I've been such a big fan of Google Gemini kind of thus far. First things first, it's on our phones and you can basically use it as your Google Assistant. Like literally all day, I'm kind of cooking. Hey, how do I do this? Or hey, what is this? And it's always there. We're all just kind of used to the Google brand being all around us for better or worse. But then also in the context of especially AI and my world, Agentic AI, this is our AI studio. One thing that I love about using Gemini is on our platform, you can kind of see how everything is going to cost with using the models. And the big thing here is the size of context. It kind of stands far above most other actual models, you know, being under like 250,000 tokens for the most part. Whereas Google and most of their models has 1 million, if not more than 1 million tokens. So obviously that's probably more tokens than you'll ever need. That can be entire books, that can be entire code bases, very powerful. But then also the input and output prices are also very, very inexpensive, basically free as you can see here, which just makes it much better to use when creating agents in this case. And I'm very excited for when we actually put on 2.5 Pro because you'll see here why it's so much better. So first things first, this is Google's announcement that they just put out kind of saying all things about Google Gemini 2.5 Pro. You can head over to blog.google or just type in Gemini 2.5 Pro in your Google search that I'm, I'm assuming that you'll be using and it will come up. So let's start off with the number one part of why this is such a great model. So as you can see right here, in the field of AI, a system's capacity for reasoning refers to more than just classification and prediction. It refers to its ability to analyze information, draw logical conclusions, incorporate context and nuance, and make informed decisions. So this is where we're talking about all these new models that are coming out, where if you've heard of reasoning models, like DeepSeek R1, that's what the R is, reasoning. A lot of the open AI models are also reasoning models now. That's kind of where a lot of people are going, where you prompt something and then in the back end, it'll just start thinking. And then once it's done thinking, it will give you the actual response, which we'll, we'll see when we actually go through Gemini 2.5 Pro. But that's where a lot of the industry is going now because it's much smarter. It can actually think through things. So imagine I was talking to you and I'm like, hey, will you bake me a cake and just leave you there? like. Uh, what kind of cake? I don't know how to bake this cake. What do I do? You need a recipe. You need a plan to follow. You can just think of that as basically a reasoning model. It's giving a plan for the LLM to follow rather than just, it has all the knowledge basically in the world, figure it out. It actually gives it structure. So for the most part, as you see here, we've explored ways of making AI smarter and more capable of reasoning through techniques like reinforcement learning and chain of thought prompting. So it's basically just a series of promptings in the back end. And that's what they've been using for their previous models. But now with Gemini 2.5, we've achieved a new level of performance by combining a significantly enhanced base model with improved post training. So going forward, we're building these thinking capabilities directly into all of our models. That's great. They can handle more complex problems and support even more capable context aware agents. Wonderful. So. Reason number one why it's great, it's also adding a new way of creating this reasoning model, which I'm assuming is you know through their proprietary knowledge on the back end since they have so much data. They pretty much have all the data in the world, obviously. And then here's where we get down to seeing the big, big difference here. So in the industry, LM Arena is kind of the standard that people go to and seeing what are the best models to be using. So let's go to LM Arena where you can actually see what it looks like. What LLM are people saying is the best overall? And as you can see, it has been, you know, less than 24 hours since this has been out. And Gemini 2.5 Pro 
is already number one, beating Grok 3, GPT 4.5, and then other Gemini models, which is also, once again, a huge reason why I love Gemini is there are three Gemini models, you know, within the top 10 of Ella Marina. So they just do a great job. But from Ella Marina, you can actually go into deeper, let's see, math. Once again, 2.5 Pro, number one in math, beating DeepSeek R1, GPT 4.5, 01, 03, kind of the other biggest models that everyone's talking about and everyone's using right now. Let's go to creative writing. Once again, Gemini 2.5 Pro above GPT 4.0, Grok 3, once all of them once again. And let's lastly check out instruction following. And there it is. Once again, Gemini 2.5 Pro. Basically just showing, hey, this is a non-biased website, at least as far as we know, where they just allow people to try out different prompts and different things about the LLMs and tells these people, hey, I liked this one the most. And the most amount of people enjoy Gemini 2.5 the most. So now we can see here that Gemini 2.5 Pro is available right now for free in Google AI Studio, which we'll look at after this as well as the Gemini app for advanced users. And then it will be coming to Vertex AI. But as we scroll down here, it'll show kind of the differences amongst the other big players for the LLMs on how it compares with different tests. So kind of the big standard that people are using right now is Humanity's Last Exam, which is basically a conglomeration from thousands of different people from around the world, kind of experts, coming up with the questions that usually LLMs would not do too hot with. But once they start answering these questions better and better, that's when we know, okay, we're kind of approaching AGI closer and closer. And as you can see here, Gemini 2.5 Pro, 18.8% versus the next closest one being 03 Mini, 14.5%. And you still see it has GPT 4.5. It's got Cloud Sonnet. It's got DeepSeek R1, Grok 3, going over all of these different LLMs. And it's still kind of, in this case, I mean, four points that blows it out of the water. Then all these different math exams. It's better at math than O3 Mini. It's once again showing both of these math exams. Code Bench, not quite the best at coding, but it does a great job. And it's not the worst at coding. That's something that I always like to point out with the Gemini models. Maybe we won't see it at the top of LM Arena for much longer, but it's probably going to be within the top 10 again. I mean, even the other older Gemini 2.0 models at this point are still within the top 10 on LM Arena. So whether it's number one or not, honestly, is not the biggest deal. A lot of times people are going for a specific niche topic that they want to be number one in, Google's kind of like, hey, let's be almost the best in all of them, if not the best in this case. So that's something that I really enjoy about Google Gemini is that they're always consistent across the board, maybe the best generalist rather than being like hyper-focused, almost like a vertical agent versus Google Gemini is going for that horizontal agent aspect where it's good at most things. Okay, so we already went through the enhanced reasoning aspects of it and how it does on the tests. And then advanced coding. Let's go ahead and take a look at what their demo is for their coding. All right, so yeah, and the endless runner game. I feel like that's kind of the, the common one that a lot of people use. Okay, so that's where you can see the thinking, the reasoning model side of it. It's thinking before it actually gives its answer right there. Boom, there it is. Okay, so a fully functional endless runner game. It is slightly different in the fact of Let's say Cloud 3.7 Sonnet, for example. If I were to ask it to make this as well, it would be able to kind of code it and actually put it in the artifacts or the canvas to be able to deploy it and kind of test it out right in the actual interface itself rather than having to go off to another application. But obviously you saw how easy it is. It's nothing too crazy. It is just something interesting to, to kind of point out. We kind of talked about this in the beginning, talking about with Google Gemini 2.0. It ships with a 1 million context window with 2 million coming soon, which sounds great. Strong performance that improves over previous generations. It can comprehend vast data sets and handle complex problems from different information sources, including text, audio, images, video, and even entire code repositories. I have heard people talk about how it has an enhanced ability to actually comprehend images. So let's go ahead and hop over to Google AI Studio. 
as easy as that, type it in. And then here is where we can see what the actual studio looks like. You have the ability to change the different models. So it, on this case, it's already at Gemini 2.5 Pro, so I don't have to do anything, but it has all the older models as well. And this is where you might actually remember Google being in the news, what was it, like last week or a week, the week before probably, for this native image generation model that was kind of taking the AI image generation world by storm. That's what this is. You can play with that right here, but that's for a different story. Once again, showing why Google is doing such a great job right now. So let's try making the game that they basically showed as their demo. Let's see how realistic it is. Okay, so create an endless runner game with unique visuals and a pixelated character. Use the keyboard to map the most logical controls and keep the control compass on the screen at all times. Because if you've ever coded a game before, sometimes it chooses random controls that don't quite make sense. And you're like, how do I actually play this? Hopefully this will allow it to stay on the screen where I will know what to click and make it in P5.js with no HTML just so that it's actually able to run on P5.js. All right, let's run this. Okay, so first and foremost, you can see where it is thinking. Notice how I have the choice if I want to click into that, I can. If I don't care about what it's thinking about, I don't have to. But for the sake of you actually seeing it, let's open it up. This is that laundry list of kind of ideas that it that you want it to actually follow. It's putting a structure down to bake the cake, as we talked about before. And if you don't care about it, like it's finished there, it goes on to the actual output where it's just creating the code for us now. And notice how fast this thing has actually moved. Okay, so it is done. It kind of tells you how to run it and all that. But I don't really care. Let's go ahead and go over to P5.js Web Editor. Paste it in and let's run. Okay, so we can see that space equals jump. Maybe I should actually go onto the screen. Okay, clearly I'm not very good at this. Let's try it again. Okay, nice. Notice how it natively chose, okay, I have the perfect like height that it can jump where I can actually go over all of them, but you still have to be good at it too in order to do it. But pretty cool that I didn't have to do any multi-shot prompting there. I didn't have to give it any real examples. I didn't have to go in and say, you know, change this, which I can after the fact. But for the first iteration, pretty cool. And of course, that's just one of the examples. Coding is kind of where most people like to go with a lot of these. But for the most part, you can see on Google AI Studio, it is free for us to use. And as we saw, it is the best model right now. If you go to ChatGPT and you'd want to use 01 or 4.5, you would have to pay at least $20 a month, maybe $200 a month. And who knows, they're at what? They're talking about $20,000 a month. And the same thing with Sonnet 3.7. If you want to actually use it kind of long-term, you have to pay for it. Whereas this is free for right now that you can just try things out. As far as I know, it's not stopping you. If you, you know, you've talked to it too much, you can just keep asking questions, keep trying things out. And even like I showed you, you can actually even try out this uh, image generator as well in the same exact place. So now you can actually understand and see a little bit more about why Gemini 2.5 Pro is the number one model right now. And hey, if you want to check this out for yourself and try it out, make your own endless runner game, try out the different kind of coding tasks or just normal tasks that you've seen online or that you're curious about, go ahead over to Google's AI Studio and try it out there. And of course, when it's in Integral's AI Studio, it'll be even better to check it out there. But hey, I want to hear from you guys. What do you think of Gemini 2.5 Pro? Are you more of a ChatGPT person or a Claude person? Maybe even Grok? Or do you like sticking to Google or do you try them all? Make sure to let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in keeping up to date on all things AI and Agentic AI, and maybe even some demos about how you can start building AI agents for your business or your personal life, make sure to like and subscribe to this channel or even join our Discord channel where you can interact with me and other people from our team directly so that we can show you the simplest way that you can build AI agents. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.